You are listening to the SDSU Football Podcast, presented by the East Village Times with your hosts, Andre Hagverdian and Paul Garrison. Welcome, listeners, to another episode of the SDSU Football Podcast. I am Andre Hackverdian, and I'm joined by Paul Garrison. What's going on, Paul? Nothing, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm uh, excited that we're getting inching our way closer to September 3rd and the start of uh, the San Diego State 100th season of football. Absolutely. And I've had a lot of people ask that question. Are you getting excited? Are you getting excited? And I, I, I tell them my answer is, that we have so much work to do between now and then that it's just kind of like, this is, this is busy season, man. So a lot of great things that are out in front of us. And, and that's what we want to talk about um, in this, this brief intro to this podcast. Yeah. We were fortunate enough to have a chance to sit down with the three coordinators for San Diego state. Um, obviously offensive coordinator, Jeff Eklinski, defensive coordinator, Kurt Maddox and special teams coordinator, Doug Deacon. We got some great insight from them on how they see uh, overall units and some of the position groups doing. Um, And that's kind of how we have built our uh, season previews that we're going to be publishing out there over the next uh, several weeks. Right. And, you know, I think that as our coverage has grown in these village times, the opportunities that we've had to have interviews and things like that has also grown. So just remembering last year when we did the previews, we were still using some of the quotes from spring camp. So to have this exclusive content, you know, finding out things like, will Haskell is the backup. I mean, everyone was wondering about that. Everyone kind of assumed that that was the way it may go. Um, but he was listed tied on the depth chart. And then, you know, you just you start seeing names being dropped, them talking about this person, that person, because they've seen them over the summer. They've seen how they progressed in the camps. They've seen how they progressed in seven on seven and all the weight room that they do with Coach Hall. So I think that uh, as it should be with local coverage, what we've been able to provide, I think, is second to none. Yeah. And as you guys will notice, uh, our season preview articles are going to be divided up by position groups. So obviously the offense has five different position groups. The defense has four different position groups. And then special teams obviously is a mixture between the kickers and the returners and the, uh, you know, the guys that do everything else on special teams. Right. And so you'll see articles that will come out uh, about each particular position group. And then we will also um, have podcast episodes that where we'll play the segments where we ask the coaches or coordinators about those position groups. So I think it's a format that our listeners will definitely enjoy for sure. Yeah. And and the genesis of it, we went through different ideas, um, whether we were going to tackle it by, you know, class, senior, junior, sophomore, freshman class. At one point we were thinking that all these articles would kind of be brought together, but the conversations with the coordinators has been so rich that the information really didn't lend itself to doing, you know, here's the whole offense in one series. Here's the whole defense in another. Here's all the special teams, you know, however we wanted to do that. So it's exciting because this is really kind of the culmination of, of this work in progress um, where we've been able to, to get this out in this format. Right. This is going to be part one of the look at the offense. And we're going to start with the quarterbacks, obviously, because we all know the quarterbacks are uh, the highest profile players on the team and the guys that can dictate how successful your season is going to be based on their play. So got some great insight about the four quarterbacks that are, you know, at, at the top of the depth chart, if you want to say. And I think you guys will enjoy it. We want to welcome Coach Eklinski back onto the podcast. How are you doing today, Coach? Doing great. Thank you for having me on. Hopefully you guys are enjoying your summertime and a little bit of downtime before the craziness starts here uh, in August. Yeah, I believe I think media day is in two weeks or so. So uh, definitely ready to get get going again. Right. Right. Last time when we spoke to you, it was around uh, early spring camp. So a lot has happened since then. Um, You know, many of the players and coaches we've spoken to talk about how the end of spring and the beginning of fall is like when the players make their biggest improvements. 
Um, how do the coaches learn who has improved and in what areas, or do you just wait and see when fall camp starts? No, I think we got a pretty good idea as to, you know, watching them over the course of the summertime, watching their work then from when we finished. And we had a lot of time in between when we finished and when we even started our summertime. I think they had an extra four to six weeks in the weight room. So just watching at that progression, the confidence that they're working in, you know, they have a, you have a really good understanding of where they're at as a player. They feel good about themselves. And now coming into the summertime, watching what their work is with Coach Hall, and, and, you know, just even, you know, from our standpoint, watching our quarterbacks in, in seven on seven and, and and really running individual now, which we can do, which we couldn't do before, you know, they're really still running it, but we're able to be there and watch and just watching the confidence at which we're operating in. Uh, you can tell a huge difference, uh, especially with Braxton, Kyle and Liu, you know, now knowing the system and understanding the system and will having, you know, much more time in it. Uh, other than just being a first year player. So it, it's been great. And, and you know, we're, we're looking for a great finish to the summer here in July and, and obviously a great start to fall camp. Now, you've never been shy about talking about the, your high expectations for the, your offense. You know, given all the new pieces, are you closer to reaching those lofty goals than in years past? Yeah, I think so. And I, and, and, you know, I mean, if you don't have high expectations, then, then what, are, what are we really doing here? Right. You know, I mean, that's 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 always been our mentality. I mean, you, you coaches never shot away from, you know, from what the goals are of winning a conference championship and, and competing for a national championship and being on a national scale. And and, and so our, our expectations are always going to be high and in, in, in to meet those high expectations and to live up to those expectations. And, and so, you know, I, I think we are closer. Uh, you know, I thought we finished last year extremely strong. And as you guys have pointed out before, if you look at kind of the last quarter of, of where we are and really from the last half of the season on, you know, I really I, I really thought we were starting to gain uh, an edge and an expectation as to where we want to be and how we want to play. And, and I thought spring really was an example of, of where we're headed to. And now we need to put it all together in fall camp and be ready to kick it off against Arizona, which is going to be a great uh, – it's going to be a phenomenal football game. It's something I don't think, you know, San Diego State, Aztec football, and our fans have really experienced because this will be the first time it's truly our home. So kind of pulling the curtain back, and I guess before we go into the, the different position groups, um, just in general, how, how is it decided who gets what reps in the game and kind of the substitution patterns at the different positions? You know, I really rely on the position coaches a lot of times. We talk a lot of it during the week and going into the week, and, and we'll have a lot of heavy discussions as we come through fall camp now as as to rotations and things like that. And there's a reason all the position coaches are on the field and they're with their position group and they're with their players. And being up in the box, I'm removed from that. And, and so I rely on them, you know, okay, you know, Coop's going to say, okay, Jesse just ran two two routes. He caught one, you know, down the field, and hey, I need to give him a break. You know, we don't communicate that. That's on that's on Coop to do that because he knows his players better than I do. He's down there. He sees them. He's with them, and he can make that happen immediately. Uh, there's a lot of communication that goes on during the week, obviously through that. Uh, if Mike is going to make a change, then usually that happens in between series. Uh, where he'll say, hey, somebody's got somebody, somebody's in the tent. Uh, he's he's being checked for an injury. Jeff, I need to get so-and-so in. Great, Mike, whatever you got to do, go. Uh, so I leave a lot of that up to them. Uh, if it is a quarterback situation like we went through a year ago where we go through multiple, uh, you know, the Boise game was one that really comes to mind. You know, the San Jose State comes to mind. That's usually where I'll get on the phone with, with, with Coach Horton and I'll say, Jeff, I need you to go to coach. Um, you know, I think we need to make a change here. Something needs to happen. Then he'll usually communicate with coach. Coach will get on the headsets and say, hey, tell me what you're thinking. And then and then normally coach is like, yeah, let's go ahead and go make it and let's make that happen. So, you know, there's a lot of there's a, there's a lot of communication that's taken place throughout that. Uh, but for the most part, with the position groups, that's up to their position coaches and, and keeping their players fresh and, and, and making sure we have the best players on the field at the right time. So then jumping into the the quarterbacks, um, obviously a lot's been made of the position. Doesn't matter where you're at, quarterback is the most talked about position. Always. Um, 
but Braxton Burmeister, you know, he came in, there was a lot of talk about competition and he needs to compete from a distance. It seemed like he won it fairly early. Did, did that surprise you, his ability to, to, to do that? Or did you think it was going to kind of last into the fall camp like it did last year? No, uh, I, I thought I thought between the competition between Will and Braxton that somebody was going to separate themselves quickly. You you can just you, you get a really good feel for Braxton's experience through this. And, and it really wasn't anything that Will didn't do. It was just yeah. the amount of experience that Braxton came in with. And, and, and that confidence in that calmness that he plays with, you could tell, I mean, he's played 20 plus games in, in the ACC and, and just had a great feel. And then how many games he played in, in the Pac-12 at Oregon, but he just had a great feel for the game. And, and you could just tell that as, he, as we were going, you know, he was getting more and more comfortable. I, I didn't, I, I really didn't think it would go through that, that long of, of a process like it did a year ago. I think we had a lot of unknowns a year ago coming out of COVID. Lucas was injured. You know, that whole 2020 season, we saw Lucas for what, three quarters, you know, and I, and I think we were still trying to get things right around our quarterback situation where I felt Braxton and Will came into a more stable situation from, from everybody else that was around them to how we were presenting it to everything. I've grown a lot as a coach and you've heard me say that a lot too. I've grown a lot as a coach in, in, in understanding on really st- from a starting point to getting to the first game, the presentation and coaching part of it from fundamentals techniques and playbook wise, you know, I think we're just, we're just farther along and, you know, where we should be going into, you know, what essentially is kind of almost year two and a half. If you take that COVID year as a half year. So coach Hoke, you know, said that Braxton would be the starter unless he got fat during the summer. Hmm. So, uh, so how did Braxton he, summer go? He's not getting fat. Trust me. He's <laughs> not getting fat. What does he need to, what does he bring to the position? Both, both he and Will are having great summers, and, and so are Kyle and Liu. You know, I, I think I think our quarterback room from where I first got here in 2020 to where we are right now is is, is a completely different room and, and, you know, a completely different set of, of athletic abilities that can throw the football. So I think we're, we're, we're right where we want to be. Braxton's the ultimate competitor. You know, the, the, the best thing about Braxton is when you tell Braxton he can't do something, he's going to find every way to prove that he can do it. And that's what you want at that position. What we probably didn't know going in, and I think what we saw very early is Braxton is a very accomplished thrower. Uh, you know, we, we were able to really streamline a lot of fundamentals and techniques in the passing game with drops and footwork and things like that and really get his eyes in the right spot. And once that started to hit, you know, you can really see uh, where when he entered, you know, when he was repping through spring ball, you know, he really re- was able to take us down the field and do a lot of great things. That has continued. You know, I think like through his first four seven on sevens, I want to say he was he was seven of ten uh, in three out of four and six out of ten in his last one. So, I mean, he's completing almost, you know, in the high 60s in Skelly and that's after everything that we do. Uh, so, you know, you can really see the confidence really starting to build through that, but he's the ultimate competitor. And then, and then Will is, is, you know, really doing a great job of learning from Braxton. That's hard when, when you're competing against that guy, that's hard because that's the guy you're trying to beat, but yet you still want to take and learn and you can really see Will's growth and maturity and in, in what it's going to take in order to be a high level quarterback. You know, I mean, the notes that he's taken in the meetings that we've had and, and, you know, you watch him now out at seven on seven and he's right there with Braxton and that seven out of 10 almost every time and, and, and learning how to push the ball down the field while yet still checking down and coming down. So you just see a lot of good things from those two and a lot of good competitiveness. And, you know, if we, if we're in a game and we're 14 or 15 out of 20, you know, and, and that's kind of how we look at it in, in increments of 20. If, you know, if you're 14 or 15 out of 20 and during during any course of the game, you're feeling pretty good about how you're moving the football. And, and that's where we want to be throwing the football wise. Yeah, you talked about, you know, that expected competition between uh, Braxton and Will. Um, I think it was a bit of a surprise to some to see the post spring depth chart where there was no named backup and it was a three way tie for that backup quarterback spot. 
is that more of the true freshman really catching up quicker than expected? And how comfortable would you be to have a freshman being one snap away from playing? Well, I think they're all, I mean, truthfully speaking, they're all one snap away from playing. And, and, and you know, we're, we're still in a little bit of COVID deals. You know, we still deal with some of that every now and then. We're, you know, you're still going to have that pop up. So everybody's really more truly one snap away from playing. I don't think that's ever that's that's ever different and that's the way we prepare all four of them i don't think that's a product of anything other than just you know we want we want all three of them if you look at it will's been here one year and the other two have been here a semester so they're still competing and still growing and still learning and and we want to keep the pressure on all four of them you know and that's and braxton knows that will's not very far behind braxton also knows that if something were to happen and will goes into a game Braxton's his biggest fan because it's all about winning the football game. And all that matters is that we win the football game, you know, never lose sight of the, the goal when you enter every game is to win it period. And, and, and the game flows a lot of different directions throughout. And if we pigeonhole ourselves and say, this is what we've got to do and who we've got to do it with, then you're never going to be able to make the adjustments to win when the game flows in a different direction for you. And so, you know, they're all one snap away, Andre, to be honest with you, and they're all prepared that way. So just talking a little bit more about Will, um, you know, earlier in the conversation, we were talking about the post spring to um, summer. Well, Will, this is his first, just the first opportunity to be able to do that. Um, so just take us through his off season, what he's growing on. And, and then I guess if you're willing to answer this, not, it sounds like he has elevated himself into that backup role. Yeah, I mean, it, it's going to take, uh, again, you know, it's the same thing that coach said with Braxton. Braxton's a starter unless, you know, I would say the same thing with Will. Will is going to back up Braxton unless. And, and that unless is you still have to perform. You have to come in every day and you have to work at a level uh, and, and to reach the expectations that we have, not only for the position, but for the offense and for the team. And, and if at any point in time you don't do that, there's somebody there who's pushing to take your spot. That's competition. And that's the way coach has built this program since 2009. And, and that's really why there's been a sustained level of success here is because that level of competition coach hall builds that competition every day during the summertime. And, and you ought to see these guys compete out here during the summertime, every morning at 6 AM, whether it's in the weight room or on the field. And so that unless comes in, you know, and that's that's what it's still their responsibility to go compete every day. You know, like you said, Will wasn't here a year ago in the spring. Will came in, in June and was here June 1st. Will's actually, you know, what, 13 months into this now. And so, you know, really the biggest the biggest progression Will made and I thought early in spring he was pressing and I thought as he started to relax and then you know, all just get into rhythm, get, get into the flow and let his athletic ability go play. Then now you saw Will throughout the course of spring really start to, you know, close that gap to Braxton and really start to push Braxton. You know, that's going to be the same progression for those other two as they come through here. It's just how fast can they get up to that speed? And I think that's where you've really seen Will this summer. Just, you know, it, it's more of a, I've been here, I've done this, I belong sort of, sort of feeling. And, and you, you can see that now that's what Braxton had when he came in. That's what Will has now as he works, you know, there's, there's, there's still, we're still pushing on Will and Will is still pushing himself because I don't think Will even knows how good he truly can be because of everything that he does so naturally. And now how do you push yourself to be able now to push yourself over that and, and really become who you truly are meant to be as an athlete. That's that's kind of the stage we're in right now. In terms of, of knowledge, understanding, all that stuff, he does a great job. Every now and then, you know, it, it's still a part of, you know, hey, my drop doesn't match the route concept, things like that. But that's becoming less and less and less. And that's just reps as he comes through the system and experience. There you have it. That was uh, part one of our interview with Offensive coordinator Jeff Eklinski, where we talked about uh, initially about the overall state of the offense and, and heading into fall camp and the developments from spring camp and summer camp. And then a look at the, the quarterbacks, uh, starting with offense, obviously starter Braxton Burmeister and the three backups, uh, Will Haskell, Leo Amavai 
and Kyle Crum. That's going to do it for this episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we will be back soon with part two of the offense in the next couple days. You are listening to the SDSU Football Podcast, presented by the East Village Times with your hosts, Andre Hagverdian and Paul Garrison.